Hello, uh, welcome to another practice question here. This one is a very typical graph that you're going to see. You've probably seen that uh, in the notes already. Uh, really important what it's talking about is millivolts. So what we're looking at is when we stick a probe into a particular section of an axon of a neuron, how negative or how positive uh, is it inside that uh, section of the uh, uh, that section of the axon? Uh, so when we see this graph, very important. So let's uh, again, we're just going to try to uh, emphasize some of the key strategies when you're getting these type of questions, especially a graphed, uh, higher level type of questions, as I explained in previous videos. Uh, first thing we want to take a look at is the fact that this pertains to this graph pertains to the next two questions. Uh, then we've got to just read it quickly in that and see if there's anything that we recognize. Uh, stimulation of a sensory neuron produces an action potential. Abnormal pattern of action potential can be used to detect MS, multiple sclerosis, uh, in its earlier, uh, earlier stages. The graph below illustrates the membrane potential of a normal neuron after stimulation. So when we see this graph, really important that we start to look at uh, the X and Y axis, what they're actually measuring. If we take a look at the Y axis, we see that it's measuring millivolts. So how negative, how positive it is inside. If look at the X axis, it's measuring time in milliseconds. Okay, so once we see that, uh, again, very, I'm sure you recognize this graph. Uh, when we take a look at that, let's just take a look at this little line here. And we're going to make some really quick notes and I advise you to do the same thing when you're inside your, uh, when you're in a test environment as well. So this particular one here we know is resting. And we know at resting, it's generally, if you take a look, in between minus 80 and minus 90, or uh, minus 100 is uh, minus 90. So they're saying in this particular neuron, at rest, it's about minus 90. Uh, we can see that what happens, all of a sudden it moves up. We start creating a more positive environment inside the axon. In fact, it actually goes to about plus 40. So we know this section of the neuron, uh, or the, of the graft, is depolarized. And once it reaches threshold, remember there's an imaginary line, uh, often around minus 50, there's an imaginary line called threshold. And we know that once enough sodium enters the axon to reach threshold, we then get the action potential. So this is part of action potential. I'll just abbreviate. Right here we see maximum depolarization right at the very top. And then all of a sudden we start to see a decrease when they measure again uh, the uh, axon with a probe, they start noticing that it starts becoming more negative again. So we know this section is repolarized. And it becomes repolarized by, we know, kicking out potassium outside. We kick potassium outside. This one we know depolarization is where sodium rushes in. Okay? And we kick out so much potassium that we actually overshoot past resting, right? We know this section is called hyperpolarized. And I won't go on all the details because it was in our teaching video, but it actually goes past resting potential. And it does that to help ensure that this impulse doesn't go backwards. We know that the period between hyperpolarization right here and resting again, we know that that period right there is called the refractory period. And we need that in order to reset the neuron to get ready for another impulse. Okay, so you're gonna see, you can potentially see all sorts of questions, and you will see all sorts of questions pertaining to this graph. So there's a lot going on with this graph here. Well, to get uh, hyperpolarized, to get it back to resting, we know that's the activation of the sodium potassium pump. So let's take a look at a sample question and uh, numerical response. We love these questions, don't we? Numerical response. So they're saying, what is resting membrane potential for this particular neuron? Express in two digits, and what is the maximum membrane potential during depolarization? They say express to two digits as well. 
Record your answers as absolute values. You're not going to use any positive or negative signs in your answer. That's important. A lot of people tries to squeeze this in and it's often machine marked. So if you put a positive or a negative in there, it's going to see that as something that's wrong. Okay, so you're skipping the positive or negative. So at rest, we already kind of looked at this at the beginning of this video. We see at rest, it's between minus 80 and minus 100. So between those are 90. Now it is minus, but they're asking you to exclude the negative signs. Okay, maximum depolarization. That's this piece right at the very top. And if we follow along, we can see that it has a millivolt, millivolt value of plus 40, but we're gonna exclude the positive and we're just gonna put 40 in there. So uh, they're saying, put your four digit answer in the numerical response section of your answer sheet. Those are the four digits that you're going to put in that correct sequence, 9040. Now there could be other questions. You may see questions that will ask you, what is the time for refractory? And refractory is the period of where it starts, where it becomes hyperpolarized till it recovers back to resting potential. So it'd be this period in between that you would be putting the value down, okay? And you just read that off, right? 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, one right? And then so on, 1.1, 1 .1, 1 point, or, uh, uh, 1 1.1, 1 1.2. And then you just measure that time. So they could be asking questions about that as well. So uh, just get really familiar. If you take a look uh, at our notes on page 19, where it talks about measuring millivolt graft, and it even says that right in your notes, very important graft for the unit midterm and final exams and that. So really get comfortable with this graph because you're guaranteed gonna see it again. If we take a look at the next question for this, uh, here's the graph again, we won't have to interpret it again, but it says explain the events that take place at maximum membrane potential during depolarization. So they're asking right here what happens. So we already said here that NA gates are open and NA sodium rushes in that's what creates this positive environment inside the neuron. But what happens right at the very top? Well, if the sodium gates are open, it's probably important that we now close the gates. We've already accomplished the impulse, the function of getting the impulse. Now we have to get this neuron back to normal. So NA gates probably close. And what do we have to do in order to get this membrane potential back down to negative? Well, we probably have to open some potassium gates and potassium is going to then be ejected out of the axon, out of the neuron. So potassium uh, leaves, okay? And that all of a sudden, now potassium is positively charged. So now as we start to uh, release it out of the axon, it becomes more negative environment and it actually overshoots, we said, to the point where it gets hyperpolarized. So what's happening out there? Sodium gates, uh, uh, sodium gates are closed, are closed. So uh, take a look at that. Potassium gates open and potassium enters. Well, we know potassium is not entering at that point. Uh, if anything, potassium is leaving the axon. So there's no way that that can be true. Potassium gates are closed. Sodium gates are opening, allowing more sodium to come in. Doesn't make sense, so we're gonna cross that out. Let's take a look at our next option, process of elimination, like we've talked about uh, before. Sodium gates closed and potassium gates open, allowing potassium to leave the axon. So when you take the time to make a few little notes right on your graph, you can see that that is going to lead you to the right answer. So even though it takes a moment to do a couple of quick notes, not a long time, uh, again, it's going to set you up to come up with the right answer better than if you just try to do it cold, um, you know, without uh, interpreting the graph and without, without making a few notes. Sodium gates close, not allowing sodium to enter. Well, that doesn't make sense because we don't want it to enter uh, anymore. Well, actually that one isn't bad, right? Uh, sodium gates closed, not allowing sodium to enter the axon. That's true, but in this case, 
The best answer is C. Okay, and again, if you have any issues, uh, just get a hold of me on email and we can book an appointment to go over some of these.